this form of Hess's law is pretty easy to identify because of two things. You're going to be given a goal reaction involving trying to find the enthalpy change or possibly molar enthalpy change, um, just as though you're using heat formation. However, instead of using heat formation, you have to incorporate these component reactions, which will be given to you either as they are in this example or they might be given to you in words. Now, your job is to take these two component reactions and manipulate them somehow, some way, in order to end up with your goal chemical reaction. So this is the answer you're seeking out, okay, your goal. So uh, when your job first then is going to be to find a common component, common substance within each of your component reactions and your goal. What I mean by that is if you look at first reaction here, we don't have we have carbon to start, but we don't have carbon up here, so I'm going to ignore that for now. I have oxygen next, and I have oxygen up here in my goal, so that might be a good one. However, you might notice that you have oxygen down here too. As soon as you have a particular substance in more than one component reaction, I would do my best to ignore it. You can work with it, but it just makes it a bit tricky. Next stop, we have carbon dioxide. Well, I think that's a good choice because we also have carbon dioxide up here. Okay. So, but the problem, as you can see, I need two moles of carbon dioxide as a product. Here I only have the one. So, when I am manipulating, I have choices, three choices. I can reverse a reaction, multiply by a factor, or divide by a factor. So in this case, I'm going to take this component reaction and multiply it by two, so that I can end up with two moles of carbon dioxide. So when we do that, I'm just going to I'll move it down here. So reaction one multiplied by a factor of two, so I'd have to end up with two carbon plus two oxygen producing two carbon dioxide. Now, whatever I do to my reaction, I also have to do to my enthalpy change. So I multiply that one by two as well. Don't forget your negatives. That ends up as 787 kilojoules. Another important point when you are working with these numbers in particular, you want those in kilojoules to start. So if they're in kilojoules per mole, you must convert it into kilojoules. Okay, component reaction number two. Well, common substance with that one, and no carbon, Oxygen, we're going to dismiss for the same reason as before. We're going to put the carbon monoxide this time. Well, here we have two issues. One, there are two of them in my goal, so I'm going to have to multiply this reaction by a factor of two again. But also, I need two as a reactant. Here, they're a product. So this time, not only am I going to multiply this by a factor of two, but I'm also going to reverse it. Okay, so i got to reverse this reaction as well. So that's going to end up looking like this. 2 carbon monoxide produces 2 carbon and 1 oxygen. So I've got a half of an oxygen times 2. And, and once again, I'm going to multiply the 110.5 by 2, which gives me 2, 121 kilojoules. Now, this time, notice I you have to remember to change the sign. When you reverse the reaction, you have to change negative to positive or vice versa. Okay, so now I think I'm done. I think I've done everything I need to do. So I'm going to add up my reactions and my energies in order to get my net reaction. So when we're getting our net reaction, reactants add up, products add up, and if you have the same substance on both sides, like the carbon, two carbon on the reactants, two on the products, they're going to cancel each other out. And something else I can cancel, I've got this oxygen, one as a product, I have two as a reactant, so I'm just going to be left with one oxygen. So then my remaining substances, 2CO plus oxygen and 2CO2, write that out, plus oxygen produces two carbon dioxide, and lo and behold, exact same. Okay, so the nice thing about this Hess's Law is you have your answer to start with.
and then just add up my numbers exactly as they are. So negative 787 plus a positive 221 giving me negative 566.0 kilojoules. Okay, that might be the end of the question. Perhaps you would have to go on and solve for molar entity of combustion of carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide or oxygen for that matter. Regardless, you, this is the first step required.